Hi, I'm Ellen, and welcome to day 12 of Vlog Every Day in April. Today's topic is grounding and shielding, and this is in response to a question that came through in yesterday's vlog. So, grounding. What is grounding? Grounding is anchoring ourselves to earth energy and source energy. And what that does is, well, the way it's shown to me is that it provides us almost the pull. So consider that earth has its poles, its north pole, its south pole, and needs those poles to be able to work the way it does, to orbit the way it does, to turn the way it does, basically do its earthly functions, it's the same for us. When we are grounded, when we have tended to our own north and south poles, then we can go about our business and know that we are able to spin on our own axis. Okay, so how do we go about grounding? It's something that we need to work out on our own because it needs to resonate and it needs to feel solid to us, tangible to us. For me, it's all intentional and yet through the intention, there are a lot of physical and psychic sensations that come up through it. So for me, grounding means pausing, taking a breath, and envisioning that there are roots growing out of the bottoms of my feet, the soles of my feet. The ones that are coming out of my feet right now are golden color. And I encourage them to root as deeply into earth as is necessary. And even though I say that, because I don't want to put any restraints on what needs to happen, I also am clearly being shown they need to connect to earth's core. So I can see that they are plunging that way and becoming more expansive. And then they just reached Earth's core and I felt definite physical vibrations in my spine. That's my experience. It may be that you feel that in a different way in your body, in a different place in your body. Don't get hung up on my experience for it to be your experience, okay? So now I'm feeling grounded to earth and I'm noticing that the energy from that core is actually coming up through the roots and I can feel it's almost uncomfortable um, only because it's so intense, the energy that's coming up through my feet and up through my legs and over my hips and up my spine and it just keeps on coming. I feel like most of it is focusing now here in my heart chakra, my heart center. And yet then I feel it going up my neck and know that it's pooling around my crown chakra too. So that feels complete to me, that part. Let's call that the South Pole. Okay, so now we need to tend to the North Pole. And the North Pole looks to me like a silver thread extending out of my crown chakra and moving up to my soul star chakra and then continuing up from there. And again, I'm encouraging it to go where it needs to go. I have a sense of where it needs to go. However, I'm not going to mandate that. So I'm observing, and if you aren't clairvoyant, you may be clairsentient, I'm clairsentient too. So I'm observing both the sensation as well as 
visually what I'm seeing in my soul eye, my soul eye. And it's really interesting. You expect perhaps it will go, you know, up and up and up and maybe out and out and out and be on the solar system or something. And yet I notice that it's connecting to what looks like a beautiful silver cloud. And what is the silver cloud? Source energy. That's how it's appearing to me right now. Oh, and as I say that, the bottom of the cloud is silver, but then when I come back and take a look at it, I can see that there's white and gold mixed in there. So the silver is, oh, wow. The silver is where all these threads, all our threads connect to source, and yet the source energy itself is that incredible, voluminous, gold energy tinged with white. So that's interesting. So then I'm permitting myself to feel, as I just heard, the extravagance of the source energy. <laughs> I love that. And it's remarkably warm. I can feel it coming through my crown chakra and then I'm feeling it in particular at the back of my back of my head and down into my neck. Oh, and that's because it's actually merging with the earth energy, with that core energy. So let's see how I'm feeling. Am I feeling am I feeling grounded at this point? I'm feeling grounded and I'm also I'm getting a lot of activity at my ears and I describe it as atmospheric changes and let me see if this is pertaining to, to grounding. Yeah, my guides are going to speak because when there is full grounding, you are more able and open to energies which are hoping to communicate. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the vibration around my ears is really something, and it's to a point where I, I've, it's that sensation of going up a mountain or going up in a plane and your ears have to adjust. That's what it feels like. And, and now my, <laughs> my third eye, my soul eye is becoming very activated. So I'm not sure what in particular is going on there and I'll figure that out independently of this video, I believe. And we'll talk about shielding. So we've taken care of the grounding. And again, take this as purely a primer and a suggestion. You need to work out what will feel best for you, what will resonate most for you. And this is something I would suggest very strongly you do every morning. It's like your daily dose of vitamin Z, as I just heard. <laughs> Whatever the Z stands for. <laughs> but your daily dose of vitamin Z. And I just heard it's the icing on the cake. So, and I really like that. I appreciate that. It's the icing on the cake. It will take care of you. Okay? So, shielding. The first thing I want to say about shielding is it's meant to be a proactive function and not a reactive function. What's the difference? When it's a proactive function, our shields are in place to help to prevent unwanted, and as I just heard, unwarranted energies from impacting us adversely. If you're an empath, shielding will help you. It will create a buffer for you. It won't be that you won't feel. It's that rather than feeling as though it's happening to you, you're feeling it as a witness, an observer, rather than a participant. Big, big difference. Because feeling as a participant 
you can become so very drained. And feeling as an observer gives you the opportunity to, well, as I just heard, to help. Okay? So how do we shield? For me, again, it's all about intention. And at this point, my current evolution of shielding is really, as I just heard, shorthand. <laughs> so I invite source light to shield me. And how I see that happening is I see a ball of source energy, so that source light, building from my heart chakra, and it grows until it's enveloped all of me, and then it, it grows until it has filled my energy field. And at that point, I notice because I've invited it in to shield me, that there it creates a defined film almost around my energy field. I can see the difference in the color. And I can tell it's strong. It actually feels quite a bit like glass to me. And then I just check in with myself. Am I shielded? Yeah. So what did that take? A few seconds? 10 seconds. That's what works for me. That's where I'm at with shielding. If you feel like you need something more concrete, then make your shielding practice more concrete. If you feel like you are one who is so highly empathic that you feel like you need to envision something a lot stronger for a shield, Perhaps you'll still invite in that source energy to assist you, and yet choose a material to represent the film around your energy field. Maybe you need to choose granite. Maybe you need to choose platinum. Maybe you need to choose diamond. Whatever works for you, whatever feels resonant with you, that will give you the confidence to feel that you are adequately shielded. And that is something as well to do perhaps first thing in the morning, ground and shield, and know that you're done. And just be aware if you feel like you're under attack if you find yourself in a situation with a lot of angry people or a lot of just highly emotional people and you're starting to feel as though you are under some kind of attack that way then take a few seconds just to recenter yourself double check that you're still feeling grounded and then intentionally strengthen your energy shield, okay? So that's being proactive. The reactive comes up in those situations perhaps that are highly emotional, where someone's screaming at us in our faces or yelling at us or, you know, people being mean, people being bullying, witnessing horrific events on the news and you suddenly realize that you are feeling extremely diminished. The way it's shown to me is that you just find yourself shrinking. Everything is shrinking from that onslaught of sensation. And so now you're in a position of, first of all, needing to be able to find the energy to expand 
into your normal energy form and then to create that shield. You know, it can happen to the best of us. And yet, being proactive is a lot easier than being reactive. Because in my experience, the reactivity takes a lot longer. And that's just unnecessary. And the reason that it does take a lot longer is because we're so caught up in all the other stuff around us. We're not in that position of being solely focused here. There's just so much else that the energy it requires to refocus ourselves, expand ourselves, and then shield ourselves. It just takes longer. And that means you're at the mercy of everything longer. So practice proactivity and be prepared for reactivity if necessary. Okay? So that's grounding and shielding in a nutshell. Any questions? Feel free to leave them in comments. And until next time, you take really good care. Lots of love.